It's time to start our first panel of the SH session. We have several talks, and the first talk is uh, time-dependent propagation, time and energy losses of protons in the heliosphere. And the talk will be given by the was Kale. You have the floor. I think if I put here. Oh. Okay, uh, good, ever, good afternoon everyone. Uh, I'm Berskelli from Italian Space Agency and I'm going to talk about the protons uh, propagation time and energy losses evolution inside the heliosphere by using a model, numerical model and the solar modulation modeling uh, with the observational cosmic ray observational data. As we know, the galactic cosmic rays mainly are originated from the galactic sources like a supernova remnant, supernova remnant, and uh, Voyagers uh, can uh, Voyagers uh, reported and also they measured the fluxes for the protons, for instance, uh, outside the heliosphere. And some experiments like AMS and Pamela, uh, they measured inside the heliosphere close to the Earth, the, the intensity and the fluxes of the cosmic rays like uh, proton. And uh, we know once the uh, cosmic rays enter the heliosphere, they interact with the magnetic field and also the solar winds. This interaction will cause the, some significant global and temporal variation in their intensity as a function of the you know, space and time and uh, in their energy. So the intensity will change. This is uh, called the solar modulation. As we uh, see here in this uh, plot, shows the for uh, local interstellar uh, spectra from the Voyagers and also for the AMS for both proton and helium. We see in the lower re region of the energy, we see some gap could be sign of the, uh, the, the solar modulation. Okay, uh, experiments, space experiments like AMS and Pamela both covers, uh, if you see here, from 2007 to, uh, to 2017, uh, covers uh, all the cycle, the solar cycle 24 and part of the solar cycle 23, and also the maximum solar activity and minimum solar activity, and covers the reversal phase for magnetic reversal phase and uh, for both polarity and also both uh, negative and positive polarity of the uh, magnetic field. So, so we have enough data, Voyagers, AMS, and Pamela. And the good news is the AMS and Pamela reported the fluxes for the proton as a function of time, you know, in the un time units of uh, monthly in a barter rotation for each barter rotation. Uh, the best way to uh, study the cosmic ray propagation is Parker evolution equation. And in this uh, study, we use the solar, uh, solar prop, um, a numerical approach, a numerical integration in the steady state. And uh, as we see here, when the cosmic rays come here, but with the backward time integrated, integration based, uh, we see, for example, when one cosmic rays came inside uh, the heliosphere and close to the Earth, here we call it initial energy, here we call it final energy. So for us, from now on, in, uh, because without uh, the backward time integration, uh, just for, you know, to apply in the solar, <coughs> solar prop uh, tool. Okay. In this uh, propagation model, uh, we have uh, we, we have used the, the calculation for the Parker equation. It's not calibrated. Okay, uh, Parker equation for cosmic ray density and also the stochastic method. The, our key data are Voyager, as I told, a Voyager, and also the AMS and Pamela. Voyager provide the cosmic ray from outside the heliosphere, and AMS and Pamela, the monthly variation cosmic ray flux is inside. Uh, the, the key ingredient, ingredient and also the key parameters in this study are uh, rigidity, 
uh, the, the diffusion coefficient is, uh, which is a function of the time and rigidity. We see in this uh, figure, in this uh, here, how uh, the dependency of the, uh, how it depends on the uh, rigidity has different behavior below and above 3 GV. And for each regime we see is a power law uh, K0 rigidity and A and B. So, and so these three parameters which are depends on time dependent K0 and the indices A and B uh, as well as the some mm, the parameters describe the heliosphere like magnetic field heliospheric magnetic field the, the solar winds and etc make our the parameters for our model so finally six parameters tilt angle magnetic field uh, heliospheric magnetic field polarity which these parameters can be defined for given approach by the some solar observatories and the uh, other trees that I introduced here can found by can be found by the fitting with the data the observed data okay so this is the whole story and the the, uh, the path we, we went through this model just using uh, some typical values to see how this uh, code and model works in two different polarities, positive and negative polarity, we use the, this model. And you see here when particles, a sig single proton, when enter to the heliosphere, uh, enters from the po uh, in the positive uh, polarity, uh, we, uh, came from the um, uh, some the, the, um, from the poles. And as you see here. Um, the, the, the histogram you see from zero and the mainly came from the, the polar region. However, in the negative uh, polarity we see here, uh, almost the, this, this is the for single trajectory for single particle uh, are from the heliospheric current sheet. So in these two different regimes, polarities, how propagation times you know we, we, how we can compare them in the negative one in the negative uh, polarity we see here are longer the propagation time is higher and is longer uh, compared to the positive one which is shorter consequently their energy loss also we expect is higher so they lost their energy higher comparing to the positive energy so this is consistent with the general drift consideration for the negative cycle protons reach the earth and uh, so they take much uh, longer time to reach to earth comparing to the protons simply uh, drift towards the earth from the uh, polar region in the positive cycle uh, okay so now we apply the ams and pamela data to found to this model in order to find the best parameters the, for uh, the diffusion coefficient for each mount from 2007 to 2017 the life cycle of the pamela and the ams that we have data in this region and we published data in, uh, okay so here uh, fitted the model with the uh, we see for the selected for the selected approach for both pamela and ams data which are fitted well with the model here. So by fitting these two, we can find uh, those parameters. Uh, one of the co-authors of this work, Fiandrini, has all recently published, and uh, with the more details, uh, uh, I would refer to this um, paper just to see the more details and find out how, it's for, how uh, they found it. So, here are our three parameters and other three parameters came from the uh, observations, tilt angle, magnetic field and polarities here. You know it, how it evolved in the time. These three came from the solar observa observatory, solar observations, but these three that I told you, the K0, A and B indices, 
for each mount from 2000, uh, uh, 2005 yeah, 2000, yeah, to 2017, uh, which covers the AMS and Pamela, uh, we can find for each mount these values. So we can find propagation time in each time unit. Okay, um, here I show our results just for two uh, energies. The well, one GeV means the energy of the protons close to the Earth. Okay, those and uh, those por por protons came to the close to the Earth. How they propagate after passing after entering to the heliosphere? So the propagation time. This is the evolution of the propagation time, and this is the sunspot numbers. We see is correlated to this, so the same behavior as the sunspot number. Uh, and also we expect the same because uh, the, the energy losses have the same behavior for this energy. Okay, I put also here a bit higher energy, 4 GeV, the protons close to the Earth with the 4 GeV. We see is a bit flatter. And uh, I didn't put here, uh, but we tested for the higher energy, let's say 10 GeV, 20 GeV, we see almost flat. So uh, the solar modulation effect vanished for higher energies here. Okay, now, uh, okay, we, we found this kind of uh, um, modeling using the AMS and Pamela, but in order to cover more sol solar cycles, we applied the BES and SOHO data, but not monthly, they are not monthly, just to back to 90s and uh, to cover more solar cycles, just to see and how they evolve the propagation time, but by those uh, um, data. Oh, again, uh, uh, these are the three parameters and the other parameters we found by fitting with those data. And of course, the Pamela and AMS here. Uh, again, the propagation time for uh, protons with the energy 1 GeV back to 90s, and also the solar sunspot number here. Uh, the energy loss as well by extension to the 90s. And here, this figure shows the propagation time versus kinetic energy in different, in four different regimes. Which regimes? Uh, solar activities, minimum and maximum solar activities, and also in each region of uh, with different opposite polarities, positive and soft, totally we have four. And these are selected, selected time approach with the, the same, these conditions. We see here, the longer propagation time happened when we are in the solar maximum, yes, uh, in, the mean, uh, in the negative polarity, and also the shorter propagation time happened when is solar minimum uh, positive uh, polarity. And the energy losses here, as we expected, you see here the energy loss is higher then it is, we see two regimes, two is divided. So green and the black are for the solar maximum, which are higher than these, param these data points in the solar minimum, which is uh, reasonable because in solar maximum, we have turbulent magnetic field and lots of irregularities. And so consequently, we have lots of uh, proton uh, interaction, so they, uh, lost their energy during the solar maximum uh, activity. Okay, so to my conclusion, we use the stochastic model to simulate particle trajectory and we found particle trajectory be modified this one as a function of time also for uh, time steps and the model, uh, the parameters of the, I mean the cosmic ray diffusion is tuned to the observation time dependent cosmic ray fluxes and we use the AMS Pamela best uh, to cover the more solar cycles. The other physical inputs, uh, which came from the solar physics and uh, so solar observatories, we are looking at uh, particle trajectories, propagation time of cosmic rays and their energy loss using our model globally tuned over a larger time interval. 
And finally, the evolution of cosmic ray propagation time and their energy losses are correlated uh, with the solar activities. Okay, thank you.